In this video, we demonstrate the laparoscopic placement of a peritoneal dialysis catheter. Based on patient preference, as well as the patient's belt line, it is determined preoperatively that the exit site for the catheter will be in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. Under general anesthesia, the patient is prepped from the nipple line down to the bilateral groins. Using an 11 blade, an incision is made at Palmer's point, which is 3 centimeters below the left costal margin in the mid-clavicular line. Next, we insert a 5 millimeter port and insufflate the abdomen. Using a 0 degree scope, a diagnostic laparoscopy is performed in order to identify the need for lysis of adhesions. With the patient in the Trendelenburg position, local anesthetic is administered so that we can insert another 5 millimeter port which will assist with grasping the catheter for proper positioning. Insertion of this port is done under direct visualization to help ensure atraumatic entry into the abdomen. With the abdomen desufflated, we determine our catheter position by placing the coils at the level of the pubic symphysis and then mark our catheter entry and exit sites. Then we reinsufflate the abdomen and in the periumbilical region we make a 2 cm paramedian incision, which is where the deep cuff will sit, and the exit site incision in the left upper quadrant should be about one inch away from the superficial cuff. We then use local anesthetic for hydrodissection through the rectus sheath. Shown on screen is a loot guide assembly, which is a sharp metal trocar wrapped by a plastic peel away sheath. It is inserted into the rectus muscle at a 45 degree angle, which helps maintain the projection of the catheter towards the pelvis as well as prevent catheter migration and malfunction. The cannula and trocar are removed, and the sheath is left in place secured by a hemostat. The loop guide sheath as well as the rectus muscle are then dilated. Not shown, the peritoneal dialysis catheter was prepared in sterile saline and a stylet introduced to straighten the coil. Guide sheath into the abdomen while occasionally retracting the stylet. The posterior orientation of the radio-opaque stripe help us avoid any kinking of the catheter in the abdomen and ensure optimal placement. The entrance site is then dilated and with the assistance of a grasper from the right lower quadrant port, we push and pull on the catheter until our deep cuff is situated firmly within the rectus muscle. Next, we confirm placement of our catheter tip within the true pelvis. and the loop guide assembly plastic peel away sheath is fully removed. We then connect an antigrade faller trocar to our catheter and secure it with suture. The catheter will be tunneled to an exit site which is lateral to midline with a curved downward facing slope which reduces infection and ensures optimal placement. We spread our passageway to help ensure the superficial cuff does not get stuck. We then trim the catheter and attach a plastic connector to our catheter. Catheter patency is assessed using sterile saline. We're looking for free passage of fluid and no flow limiting kinks. Local anesthetic is applied to our port site With the abdomen desufflated, we confirm resistance-free inflow using sterile saline and monitor for drainage from the pelvis to ensure catheter patency. Lastly, the catheter is packed with heparinized saline before applying a plastic cap. Finally, our practice is to perform an ultrasound-guided transversus abdominis plane block, or TAP block for short, for better pain control. Finally, our port sites and entrance incision are closed using suture, whereas our catheter exit site is not closed with suture to minimize the chance of infection and instead covered with mupirocin and sterile dressing.